Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Richard Stevenson and I am the Director of Education at Stevenson Dental Solutions. I'm also an Emeritus Professor of Clinical Dentistry at UCLA and our teaching center is dedicated to about 80% hands-on courses. Today we are going to cover the ceramic veneer preparation on a mandibular tooth and we're going to be utilizing burrs from the universal burr block that we've just developed and come out with. Um, you can get this for a great discount by clicking on the link in the description. And this burr block is designed to basically take care of all of your restorative needs. The burr block also has a guide here which shows you which burr to use in which situation. So we're really happy with this. Today we're going to utilize just three burrs from this burr kit and I want to talk to you about how we approach veneers. On the left you see a super veneer. This is a situation where maybe you have some wear or decay and you have to wrap around. On the right is a lingual wrap. I typically don't do these. I think it's probably much stronger to do just an incisal butt to keep that edge not so thin. So we're going to utilize the Kilgore 700 series type it on for today's project and we're going to be utilizing the burrs that I've shown you for the burr block to make it really simple. So I always like to start with a PBS putty matrix and I make different types of matrices for different types of veneer cases. I have about three different designs. I'm just going to show you today a very simple design of a bisected putty stent. And I like using PBS and not the condensation silicone you find, the pink uh, laboratory style uh, material. This is uh, much more accurate. It doesn't distort over time like the condensation silicones. Now let's go ahead and trim this carefully so that it will fit in the patient's mouth. Now typically I'm going to be making this on the diagnostic wax up or the digital model that we'll fabricate through our digital smile design approach. Just uh, go ahead and trim this so that you don't have a lot of excess material to get back into the mouth. I mean, that's the key is remember that even though we're making this on a type and on, this is going to have to fit into a patient's mouth. I think in this particular case, we're going to do just a simple bisection so we can utilize this from the side. This is an 837-012. Now, this burr is cylindrical. It's also 100 micron grit diamond, so it works pretty efficiently. And we're going to be reducing today just a little bit more than this uh, diameter of this burr, which is 1.2. We're going to go all the way to 1.5. Now, if you needed additional incisal translucency, uh, perhaps a patient uh, required that kind of translucency, we would want to reduce perhaps even as much as 2 millimeters of reduction. So for the facial, we're going to be placing a few depth cuts, utilize the 878K012. This is a, a tapered diamond with a chamfer end to it, and this will actually work quite well for creating the margin design, the finish line at the gingival as well. Uh, on these veneers, you want to make sure that you only reduce the gingival about 0.3 millimeters, the middle facial about 0.5, and the incisal facial about 0.7. So you can have a gradual increase in the uh, facial reduction. It's kind of nice to mark the depth cuts with a pencil. And I will do this in the mouth as well. So you can see where you've already reduced. So when you go to the reduction, you're not going to be over reducing those areas that you've already reduced. Another approach, of course, is the technique I've taught in many other videos using the plane reduction technique. But whatever technique you want to use, just make sure you can measure what you've taken away versus what you started with. And also where you're going. The whole idea of the stent is to show you how much tooth structure to remove based on where you want your final veneer to be located. I find it helpful when doing just a single veneer to utilize some kind of a protective matrix shim. 
I can use an instrument to create a little separation between the teeth and then insert a couple of your standard metal matrix bands, the type you would use for an amalgam restoration. And you can see that they'll provide you with adequate protection when you're removing these little peaks on the sides near the adjacent teeth. Notice it's just a straight butt joint and we're not going to wrap on that lingual at all. At this point, you could leave the shims in if you wanted to, or you could take them out. You can see there's a little bit of uh, damage to the shim, which tells us that it was very helpful right there. So it's nice to use things like this to make dentistry easier, right? So we can go ahead and check the reduction so far. It's looking pretty good, but I can see some things that are not quite right. For example, we have maybe 1.2, 1.3 millimeters off the top. We can get a little bit more. And on the facial, it doesn't really follow the contour of the outer with this 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.7 gradually increasing reduction. So we'll need to make some changes there. This is the Vision Flex uh, diamond strips. I'm going to use the 0 0.1 millimeter red strip today to create a little bit of separation between the teeth to allow the dyes to be separated. And this is really critical. Rather than extending your preparation entirely interproximally and overextending, just use a little bit of this strip to create some IPR, which the laboratory will then be able to separate the dyes without damaging the finish line in the dye material. This was taught to me by Dr. Ed McLaren about 20 years ago or so, and I found this to be essential for veneer preparations. So there's no need to wrap interproximally to break contact. Some people suggest that you must break contact to avoid staining of the margins. But in our technique for cementation of veneers, I can mitigate staining of the margins with a very simple approach of etching around the margins. This is something we discuss in detail in my courses. But here you can just see that we're creating just a little bit of removal of the tooth itself or the adjacent tooth and create just a sliver of space. And this will be closed with the final veneer. I also find it helpful to use the burr in a horizontal manner, just using the tip of the burr to create a little bit of bulk at the finish line. And bulk like this can help the technician greatly to avoid thin areas of ceramic. My go-to material is still feldspathic porcelain for veneers. I only resort to lithium disilicate when we have a substantial amount of tooth structure missing and I need to support a bilayered approach. You can see that we're uh, reducing the tooth a little bit more, but we still have more reduction to do in that facial incisal area. So you can utilize the 878K012 following the contours of the adjacent tooth and then going back to the putty to making sure that you have everything properly reduced. This is a nice uh, exercise to go through. I think we're pretty close here. Now I'm gonna put a protective matrix in again, but this time I'm gonna have it wrap around both sides. And I'm just gonna show you how we would blend the facial to the incisal. You don't wanna have a sharp delineation between the facial and the incisal. This should really wrap over so that you reduce stress on the ceramic material. further reducing this area between the facial and the incisal to ensure adequate strength in the final ceramic. Remember, do not bevel the lingual, leave it as a butt joint. I think it's quite helpful to use an electric handpiece and turn the speed down to perhaps as little as 5,000 RPM. If you don't have an electric, I would use your slow speed with a friction grip attachment. 
I think at this point we're now just about ready to move on to the final smoothing and I think it's really critical to smooth your preparations really well so that your technician can make a very smooth intaglio to your ceramic. The notion that you should leave a rough surface doesn't make a lot of sense because we're going to be acid etching and creating micromechanical retention. So smooth preparations are always appreciated by technicians. And so let's utilize the KS0F, which is a 30 micron grit diamond in a slow speed, just to blend all the little areas that may have been slightly irregular. So let's do one last verification with the putty matrix, make sure we're okay. I think it looks okay. And then of course we'd like to do smoothing. I'll use discs for this, but also the Jiffy Green works really well. I'm using right here more of a wheel shape. I also like utilizing the cup. So when you're finally finished, you should have a very smooth preparation and you should be ready for the impression. It's an unusual prep to do, being that it's a single veneer, but you occasionally will do them, and I think you can understand the approach that we took today to get the adequate amount of reduction with the incisal butt technique. Thanks, everybody. Take care.